So we're, as you were coming in the, the, to the main hall here, hopefully you got a chance to look at the um, healthy club wall. Uh, and some of the stuff that we're going to look at here today, some of the stuff that we're going to look at here touches on the work that the, the clubs that have been going through phase one of the healthy club have, has, have been going through over the last two years. Some phenomenal stuff. Uh, but clubs right across the country, as Brendan pointed out already and our speakers, just by being GA clubs are contributing to the health and well-being of our members. And with Brendan's uh, advice uh, in mind, and to be mindful of what more we can do, uh, first of all, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what we're doing in general. Uh, Emmett Hawhey and then is going to talk to you about some of the structures that are in place to support your work, and then Stacey is going to take you through some, real, some practical examples. So, sorry, that's just, what is that? Sorry, guys. So we've talked enough about, really, I heard a lot about the unique space that the GA uh, occupies in Irish life. We're not just a sporting organization, and we're not just a community organization. We're somewhere in between. And that's what makes us unique. And I think that's what brings so many people to our door. It's certainly one of the reasons that I love the GA, and one of the reasons I continued uh, to want to be involved with it long after uh, my, my playing days finished up. Uh, and the, the, so I'm from a small club, Melvin Gales, in North Leitrim. Um, and uh, from a Church of Ireland background up there, uh, I didn't do my schooling, either national or secondary school, in the local community. I went to a, a Church of Ireland school in Donegal, actually. Uh, so I was kind of taken out of my natural community because of that, for my education. And the GA club was the hook, and it was the welcoming body that brought me in and got me to, allowed me to get to know all the lads and girls my own age. There wasn't too many girls in North Leitrim at the time, I must admit. <laughs> We used, to to go, we used to have to go to Bundoran to find them. Luckily, it was only three miles over the border, but that's a different story. Uh, but the GA Club was my in into my community. Now, we're lucky. We're, we're probably the most integrated Church of Ireland family in the country. There were, there's 12 of us were in a small farm in the west of Ireland, so everybody presumed that we were uh, from, from the Catholic persuasion. So it was <laughs> an easy conversation to bridge anyway. But that was, that, that was my introduction to the GA, and that's one, I, it, I've never forgotten that, and it's always stuck with me, and it's something that's why I tried to move my career into the GA, and why I want to give so much back to it. Health and well-being is one of my other big passions, uh, and what I learned, I'm not a professional in the area, uh, what I learned about health and well-being, I learned through my involvement in the GA, largely. Um, I, I got a sentence of 15 years then with Leitrim, uh, at, the, at the age of uh, about uh, 16, uh, I played underage the whole way up. I was lucky enough to represent the, the seniors uh, for about 20 years uh, and my own province as well. And what I learned was largely garnered from the people that I met through the association. Um, and it was always the, the health side of things. Obviously, I was a, a, a incredibly passionate about the games as well and a, a very competitive individual. But Whenever I left the playing field, I tried to take the lessons with me into my educational life, into my personal life, and into my professional life. And when I got this here job, uh, it was a dream come true. No more than um, Brendan, you know, I'd often dreamed of uh, uh, walking up the Hogan steps, uh, and I had to come in the front door like everybody else in the end of it, but, but I was happy enough to do that. And I started doing a little bit of exploration about the association and what motivates people to pick the GA. In, in the modern Ireland, there's so many options now. You know, 40, 50 years ago, it was either, you know, you played, played a bit of football or hurling or handball uh, or camogie or, or ladies, or you didn't, you didn't really do anything else. Uh, that, was, you know, that was your social life uh, on, in terms of a sporting outlet. And Munster GA, actually, two years ago, or three years ago now, 2012, they wanted to find out a little bit more about why parents were choosing the GA as well. Uh, and they, they spoke to parents who were dropping their kids off at cool camps uh, and, and, and asked them, why did you pick the GA? And we have ni over 90,000 young people now that attend our cool camps annually. So the number one reason why parents chose the GA over any other sporting code, and as, as far as I'm concerned, as long as kids are playing sport, it's a good thing. I played every possible sport I could get my, my hands on. The number one reason they picked it was the health benefits that can be gained through sport. The second reason was the social aspects for sport. Uh, so mixing, getting them outside, uh, getting them um, mingling with their peers. The third aspect was personal development through playing sport. So to kind of um, 
stuff that Brendan was really touching on there, and Connor as well, the, the, the life skills that they can pick up. Uh, exercise came in at number four. The interpersonal skills, you know, the stuff that you pick up through team sports, communication, leadership, being part of something that's bigger than you, that was in at number five. And down at a lowly number six was the actual skills development related to our games. So I constantly go up to the games development uh, section in here with this here slide and remind them exactly why people get involved with the, with the GA. It's because of what we do here. Uh, and, you know, look, at obviously our games is what is the passion. That's, that's our shop window. And that's, what, that's the hook that gets kids excited and interested. And we've learned as we try to use sport as the hook to deliver positive messages that if you frame messages around diet and nutrition, getting good sleep, um, about leadership, uh, about watching uh, what substances they put into their body, if you frame that in a sporting context and link it back to their performance, then all of a sudden their ears pick up. But if you put up a big sign outside the club and say there's a, a discussion on drugs, and alcohol, uh, you know, you're not going to get them in. So sport is the hook, and we need to be aware of that when we're trying to address any key audiences in our clubs. Um, we have, as I said, I mentioned the, the, the Healthy Club project, and we're going to talk about, I'm going to talk about it a little bit more at the end of this here presentation. Uh, and instead of me doing a whole lot of talking, before Christmas we went up to one of the clubs, uh, the Castle Blaney Fox, uh, and we spent about three or four days up with them during a program that they call uh, Operation Transfogmation. Uh, and it's, it's a way that the club has extended their positive influence right out into the community and thrown the doors open to, to great effect in the community. Uh, and we put together a little a promotional video. Uh, all these here presentations and slides are going to be made available on uh, gaa.ie forward slash community in about a week after, the, after today as well. So you know, you'll be able to access all of these and the Castle Blaney Fox video will, will be there as well. Now, we're not suggesting that every club has the capacity to do what uh, Castle Blaney have done here, but it'll just show you the potential that does exist when a, a group of people come together and really put their, their, their minds to something and really maybe think outside the box a little bit and get enthused and get a, a community enthused behind them. And this is just one example of the incredible stuff that pl the clubs and the healthy club, all, all 18 clubs have been doing over the last two years. And make sure you take a look at the, the healthy club wall outside to just get a flavour of what else they're doing. And we have Nina Aero with a specific stand about some of their work out there as well. So I'll just play the video now and you, uh, I'll, I'll do enough talking and then I'll hand over to Emmett after that.